Do you ever have a problem with your humid hives drying out or lay boxes for breeding females? Then try this new mixture and hopefully you won't experience that ever again. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. All right, guys, now I should first say that I was the biggest promoter of EcoEarth. I always, always, always used EcoEarth and I still don't have a problem with it. But I wanna show you an even cheaper alternative for those of you who are growing a collection on scale. So this is called organic peat moss. Now it doesn't say organic up here, but it will say organic down here. I get this from Home Depot. I'm sure you could get it from Lowe's or maybe Amazon or other places. For me, it's really easy to pick up from my local hardware store. It's sphagnum peat moss. And it's really important when you read the ingredients that it's only sphagnum peat moss. You don't want fertilizer or any chemicals added to this mixture. This is what it looks like. It's very dry, dusty, and earthy like EcoEarth is. And it comes in a bag like that already. So it saves you time because you don't have to add water to it. From my studies in the past, peat moss is actually like damp, nutrient rich, soil from like swamps and lake beds that have dried out and it's used in gardening for holding moisture so essentially it's going to do the exact same thing that eco earth does you can get a very big bag like this for about 16 dollars now at home depot it used to be eight dollars but inflation and all that in 2022 you guys understand but this will last much longer than dollar for dollar eco earth will and you're going to get a lot more in just one $16 purchase. For you guys who already breed, you know what this is, vermiculite. I started buying this in bulk. This I do get from Amazon. You could just search vermiculite on Amazon. It's horticultural medium, vermiculite, and it says perlite vermiculite packaging. It's from this company called Industries Inc. Horticulture medium vermiculite. This comes from Amazon, Abestus free. It's a giant bag. Now, the reason I had to start going to Amazon is because Home Depot stopped selling vermiculite for me in my area. And this is vermiculite, for those of you who know. It's basically advertised as like volcanic rock ash, something like that. So it's pretty cool. It's, it's another organic mixture that you don't need to worry about being in your reptile's cage necessarily because we even incubate our babies in this and the babies come out and they're licking this stuff up and all that kind of stuff as soon as they come out the egg. So it hasn't proven to be an issue or problem at all for our hobby so far. And I can't really take credit for this mixture. So I do need to give credit to NBK Reptiles from Canada because I saw him doing this mixture and I was like, you know what? That's a great idea. Peat moss is meant to hold humidity. Vermiculite is meant to hold humidity. Why not mix the two? And so I started playing around with ratios. So you don't wanna do a one for one ratio, okay? You wanna do one scoop of vermiculite. So if you fill this whole thing up with one scoop of vermiculite, you then want to mix it with four scoops of this, or sorry, five scoops for every one scoop of vermiculite. I did try the four scoop method, but it was a little bit more vermiculite in the mixture than I would like. And I've been testing this out for months now and I haven't come across any ingestion issues, impaction issues, anything like that. Again, we incubate our baby leopard geckos in this material. So if there was an impaction risk for them consuming it, since leopard geckos are constantly licking stuff up, then I think that we would have seen it by now in the hobby or heard more people talk about it. And when I saw NBK reptiles doing it, I asked him and he said he's never experienced any issues like that and so it gave me more confidence to try it myself. Now the whole reason I had to try this is because, you know, we only clean our leopard gecko cages once a week and sometimes, depending on how much Eco Earth you would put in there, it would evaporate so quickly, especially since we keep our room temperature really high. It's tough to see, it's, it's 88 degrees on this wall 
but in reality in the room it's about 85 degrees so you can see like in this corner of the room it's 86 degrees and if i were to bring another thermostat in here it would read about 85 to 86 degrees and that's at the hot time of day right now when the sun is shining in etc so eco earth evaporated very quickly for us and I started mixing in vermiculite with the Eco Earth. Again, I really like the one to five ratio, but if you want to experiment with a one to four ratio, you're going to get more humidity or a one to six ratio, you're going to get less humidity and more evaporation. So let me explain why that is. Vermiculite is used in the horticulture industry, the plant industry, to break up the soil and cause air pockets. So have you ever sprayed into your Eco Earth container and you notice that all the water sits at the top and it doesn't ever go down into the roots, like down into the rest of the container? That's because there's no air pockets. Eco Earth is so fine and so dusty and so is peat moss that without air pockets, it's gonna be very, very difficult for water to seep down through, get to the bottom and really hold moisture. Now, peat moss is less dense, so to speak, than Eco Earth because it comes with sometimes little sticks in it and stuff like that. That is good. Trust me, you want something to break up the soil in your humid hides so that it adds air pockets. And that's exactly what the vermiculite is contributing to. So when you do five parts of peat moss for every one part of Eco Earth, what you get is a mixture, this girl's shedding over here, is a mixture that holds humidity perfectly for the girls. Look, this girl's even probably about to lay right now. She's pretty big there. So let me show you. This consistency is perfect. I squeeze it. It makes a little bit of a clump, but it's not too wet. I did experiment with keeping this more wet so that it like would drip water when you squeezed it, but that's not good in my opinion. Too much water can cause for like oversaturation of the eggs. So if the eggs are sitting in there for a week, like if you only check your eggs once a week, if they're sitting in there for a week, they're gonna be soaking up all that extra water from the soil and that could be bad for the egg. You could drown the egg in a way, I believe. You know, I, I think it's a little difficult to drown eggs, but I just didn't, the eggs were coming out a little bit softer shelled and stuff and I just didn't like it that much. So making sure that your mixture right here is not too wet is essentially what you want. You could see how loose this is, but it's still damp. Again, when you clump it, it will make a little bit of a crumble, but it's not dripping any water. You see that, no, I'm squeezing it, no water is dripping out at all. And that's perfect. Because if you use a hide like this, that's about two inches deep of this substrate, there is moisture all the way deep down into the substrate. I only have to add water to it like a couple times a month even. Doesn't need water added to it much. Compared to this size of an Eco Earth container, see this is very dry. It's There's not a lot of moisture in here, but this is one of our boys. It's okay that it's a little bit drier, but essentially we're gonna clean this boy's cage soon and he's gonna get um, some more spray in here. But as I dig down deeper, it's a little bit more moist at the bottom. And that's what the vermiculite helps with moisture retention deep down in. And so this is probably about an inch and a half of substrate. The bigger one that you just saw is about two, two and a half inches of substrate. And so you kind of have to play around with how much you spray it. The bigger ones, I'll only need to spray like every two weeks. This one I might need to spray every week. And these little hides will most likely need to be sprayed every week as well. So it depends on how deep your substrate is. This substrate right here is about an inch deep and she's kind of piled it up over there. This is wet and moist. It even makes a sound, listen and you can see the water coming out of my hands. This is actually a little bit more moist than I would like it, but so is the game of keeping reptiles. It's a constant balance between trying to keep things dry enough, keep things wet enough. Regardless, especially for females that are laying eggs, you do want to keep it wetter rather than drier, but the perfect mixture is somewhere in between wet and dry. You really don't want water squeezing out of your hand when you when you clump up that substrate like that because that's just too much water for the eggs to be sitting in and if they're sitting in that water for a week i don't think it'll necessarily drown the egg but it just makes the shell weaker and i think that it will 
not allow for as much oxygen to get to the egg, which is another good reason what vermiculite is good for is it breaks up the soil, allows more oxygen to get to the egg for better embryo development. All right, so here's something pretty cool to show you guys is we even set our babies up with humid hides because they do much, much better shedding and you don't need to worry about spraying down their cage, the cage smelling because you're spraying their poo, etc. So we put a paper towel down to absorb some poo and moisture. We give them two little shallow dishes, one for food with the vitamin supplement. The worms can crawl out of there, which is good for the first week for the babies because they like chasing it. It's a little bit more stimulative and it's a very shallow dish so they can see the worms and same with the water. And it also makes good for leaving unhatched eggs in here. So this gecko hatched out and the sibling had not yet hatched out. So what I did was I just put it in the peat moss vermiculite mixture in here, close the lid up, and just let the egg hatch overnight. Unfortunately, it looks like this was a weak baby and the baby died overnight. I didn't want to show you guys the horror of that, but the baby crawled out and died right here and the worms were already eating it. So that's another good reason of why it's good when worms get out is because they'll start to eat any decaying matter, which happens guys, when you're breeding animals, you're gonna lose babies, etc. This is actually fairly moist because I know that egg, this baby's not gonna lay eggs, obviously, so it's a little bit moister than like the female's lay hide, but babies are more sensitive to humidity issues than adults, and so I just wanted to make sure that this had enough humidity in it, plus it was letting the egg hatch. So again, if one sibling hatches and the other doesn't, you could put one sibling in the humid hide and then let it hatch over the next couple of days. This is one of our new lines of Black Knight. So it's really unfortunate that that first baby died. I mean, the second baby died. This is now 75% of the original inbred Black Knight line and 25% of new genetics that we have infused into this gecko over two generations to make it bigger, better, healthier. Since the Black Knight genetics are really inbred, that's really important to be outcrossing. And that's it, this is a perfect setup for a baby. Again, this room is 85 degrees. It may get to about 86, 87 during the day, but then it drops to 82 at night. You can see this wall is 86, and that's the hot wall. That's 86 as well, reading on this shelf. Sometimes different thermometers will read a little bit different, but in general, you wanna find thermometers that you know are good because you've matched them up before in the past with other thermometers and they've all lined up, especially if they're like different brands or the same brand. I, I do a lot of testing with our thermometers. Make sure they're good. Then once you know they're good, you can use them and place them anywhere in the room to check temperature. And because of these ceiling fans, it keeps a constant temperature in this room, 100% stable. This is how geckos will be living in the wild. They will be in caves of ambient temperature. Same with snakes and other animals that do not require UVB, ultraviolet radiation, to survive necessarily. Unlike bearded dragons, which do need ultraviolet radiation. So you can see we have that set up with UV, a big UV light strip there and a big heat lamp there for our pet bearded dragon. Same with the sail fin as UVB. The little tegus have a UVB light with heat, but leopard geckos do not need it. So as long as they have 85 degree room, they will digest fine. Babies, adults, breeding females, males, all alike, and you'll be fine. And doing ambient temperature allows you to just stack tubs like this and keep a lot of animals in a small space. So this is how they do it in like China, Indonesia, the Philippines, a lot of places that have really high ambient temperatures that are sort of like reptile farms or breeding operations. You don't need heat tape for everything as long as you have the right ambient temperatures for certain species. Okay guys, well that's it. What did you think about this Eco Earth replacement that I've shown you? Are you gonna try it? Let me know if you experiment with different ratios and I'll let you know as well if I find that a different ratio is better. But for now, one scoop of vermiculite for every five scoops of peat moss or Eco Earth, if you're using Eco Earth and you will do just fine. It will retain moisture for longer periods of time and make sure you're using at least an inch and a half to two inches of substrate if you can. The shallower the substrate, it's always gonna evaporate quicker, but the deeper the substrate, the more slowly it will evaporate. So I thank you guys for joining me in this video. I wish you guys a good one. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, have a geeky gecko, great day. Peace.